My name is Iva Lekic, I come from Croatia. I was born and raised in Zagreb, and I'm just about to hit 30, that's awful, and I've been working for five years with Lufthansa. Lufthansa is a German airline, it's an aircraft and it flies, yeah, it's an awesome a company. I started my professional career in, uh, in university, let's say, so I started to study journalism in Zagreb, I really wanted to be a journalist, I really wanted to be in the field, I really wanted to have this mic and, and chase the truth. I hated companies, I hated from eight till five, awful. Yeah, but then the life hit, uh, knocked on my door and said, you want to travel, you want to have nice clothes, you want to go to restaurant, you want to go clubbing, get some work. And you know, being a journalist in Croatia is not very much paid. So I did my master's in PR and this is how I started in Lufthansa, Croatia. I started as a sales promotion, very fancy job. You, what you have to do, you have to do these flyers, then you have to do presentation for your salespeople, then you have to host an event in a hotel. Yeah, awesome, we all love that. But I was lucky enough and Lufthansa gave me opportunity to work in marketing. So I started in marketing and then I went to London. So I became a digital specialist in London, responsible for the UK, Ireland and Iceland. And then, after a couple of years, I just became the marketing manager, and it was so cool living and working in London. Such a massive market, you learn a lot, a lot. It's a Western Europe, it's just a, like a piece of New York in our own continent. And then, after a while, I was promoted as a senior marketing and communication manager. Now I work and live in Frankfurt, Germany, which is a head office for us in Lufthansa, so I work for the Lufth in Lufthansa Aviation Center, and I'm basically responsible for the whole Europe, meaning around 30 and something markets. It's a big, big responsibility. So, what is Lufthansa? Yeah, it's a German airlines, definitely we fly, but it's a part of the group. Many people doesn't know that. Lufthansa is a mother company of so many companies, so yes, we own Lufthansa Technik, which is a maintaining um, office, which repairs the aircrafts. We own the Lufthansa Cargo, but we also own the Swiss International Airlines, Brussels Airlines, Austrian Airlines, Air Dolomiti, so many airlines, I can't even remember. So it's a huge company, obviously. Did anybody fly Lufthansa? Lufthansa? Uh, is it amazing? B product, come on, amazing. I mean, I come from Croatia, and they all say, but Croatia Airlines is so much better. Yeah, just because I'm Croatian, but to be quite honest, it's a quite a premium product in Lufthansa, and you pay for it, that's true. So, basically what Lufthansa stands for, the brand we stand for, it's a non-stop you. That's our brand value. We say we stand for our customers, our customers are the center of our universe. In the marketing, we stand for the enriching travel experience. What does it mean? We don't want to be perceived as a transporter. You know, you just hop on a plane from point A, then you just depart, you land from point B, and that's it. No. We say that experience with Lufthansa starts when you start thinking about your holiday. So if you think about holiday today, or you think about, oh, I have a business meeting in Florida next week, you, Lufthansa should be on top of your mind. And of course, then when you go and you buy the ticket to travel agents or via Lufthansa.com, up to the airport, up to when you go to the, our lounges in some of the airports, up on the board where you have a great service, when you depart, and then when you start Instagramming or putting on social media the pictures from hashtag Bulgaria or hashtag Belgrade. So this is what we stand for. And, of course, we are very legacy airlines. 62 years we are flying all around the world, a heritage, we have this heritage. Over 220 destinations, it's amazing. The fleet, amazing, a modern fleet, a big. You have to, if you, if you come to Frankfurt Airport, it's amazing. You can see all kinds of uh, aircrafts there. So, of course, we do marketing for a long time. We employ over 150,000 people all around the world and just 200, 250 are working in marketing around the globe. And we do this for a long time, so we basically know that advertising, in a way, is dying. We know that. We do, we put a lot of money before in advertising, we still do. But we're talking about digital advertising. Everybody, a little company, can now buy an online ad. It's getting cheaper. 
And of course, if you are, if you are on online, in the internet, in the cyberspace, there are so many ads, can you remember? But if you go offline, I mean, if we forget about that um, print is dead, forget about the TV does it exist or it's a smart TV, you come digital out of home, everybody loves it, you know, this rotating out of home advertising. You come to Piccadilly Circus in London, amazing. I mean, you come from the tube, there's like three, four big screens around you and you feel like you're on Times Square and it's awesome. But the commercials are rotating so fast, 15 seconds, 30 seconds, and all you can think, what did, did, did I just see? Oh, that was something red and white. Coca-Cola, I'm thirsty, I'm getting, I'm getting my Coke. Yeah, so good luck, Coca-Cola, that's how you do marketing. But we have so many competitions, especially in London. The British Airways, Emirates, where did they get this money? They're all around it, they are putting advertising everywhere. So if you put in the perspective that advertising is maybe dying, that people need to bond with the brand, needs to be loyal to the brand, that you have to produce such a content for your customer that they actually become loyal, become your brand ambassadors. Then we are talking about content marketing. And this is a big thing for us about storytelling. This is for us a big. So what we are going, what kind of story we can tell? I mean, David Beckham, you know him. He's like super famous sportsman in Britain. He's like royal family. It's something like Novak Djokovic here, yeah? Very, very famous guy. So he knows that he needs to tell his story throughout all his digital or offline channels. And he knows he can speak only about three things. Football, fashion, and family. So he never talks about environment, he never talks about politics, he never talks about economics, because he knows if he talks about everything, he'll become stupid. And this is how he, his fans are related to him. You know, so many people who are maybe interested in fashion are trying to follow, or following the David Beckham, he's so fashionable, he has Victoria in the back. So this is for us enriching travel experience, this is our travel stories, and, or this is our storytelling to our customer. And how we do it, obviously you can't put in a long text why we enrich the travel experience. I mean, who, what is the customer today? They are like multi-channeling. They, they, they watch TV and then, then you, they browse on their mobile and they want a quick and they want a funny and they want to understand the communication, the information we are selling them. And obviously you can do it through the visual content, video content. And we know 2019 that 80% of internet traffic will be videos. We know that the content is changing, the new content, the digital content is changing also the PR business. I mean, if you talk about brand PR, you are talking about infographics, animations, and so on. So, just to cut this short, this is a one case study we did. We started in 2015 and we did it with one creation agency for Europe. So basically, what happened to us? We are very much perceived as a corporate airline. So, you know, we are pricey, we are premium, we have certain standards, and a lot of people going on business meeting fly with us. But then, in 2015, our network team, they say, actually, we know that the holiday and these leisure customers, they're becoming bigger, and we need to start serving the holiday destinations. So we introduced, at that time, a couple of them. We're talking about Mauritius, Male, Cancun, Tampa, very sunny destinations. And for us, it was a very important that they are not so pricey, because we know that if you're going on a holiday, you will not probably fly on first class. You will probably, if you have money, fly business or premium. So that's how we decided that we will change the aircraft type. So instead of having the four cabins, so first, business, premium, echo, and echo, we just kept till business. So we kick out the first class, meaning we gave availability for the economy seats, meaning there is a more seats, you can sell cheaply. And then what we, what we also wanted to keep is the premiumnesses. So we wanted to keep the service we give on any of our aircraft, intercontinental. So we wanted to know that economy seat or economy cabin still has this uh, meal for free, you can still have a baggage for free, you can still get your entertainment system. But also we wanted to communicate the premium economy, which was a big thing for us because it was just introduced. So we wanted to talk about how much more you can get in Premium Echo. And obviously you can get one baggage more, you can get uh, your own m water bottle, you can get your own electronic socket. So there are so many things we wanted to communicate it. So 
the dilemma was basically we want to communicate something leisure, holiday, something a little bit cheaper, but on the other side we wanted to keep the premiumnesses. It's a very hard topic, basically. So what we did, we actually developed in 2015 the Dream Escapes, the part one. And basically, we knew we wanted to promote the summer holidays, and we knew we wanted to um, promote our cabins. But what we didn't want to do is basically to produce the typical travel guide. Because we know there was Lonely Planet, there is a TripAdvisor, we can't compete with them, and we don't want it. Because we are not a travel guide, we don't want to give tips where to eat, where to dine, where, which neighborhood not to visit. This is not our job. And basically, we came with this. This was a very parallax, I think it's called, um, uh, website, which is very easy to navig navigate. And we promoted at that time six destinations. And it was a little bit of story, catchy story, but I'm not telling a lot because there is a video uh, afterwards, so you can see it. And we did the competition. We actually raffled the intercon tickets. So that's how we got the traffic. That's easy, you know, give the tickets, everybody's in. But in 2016, we knew we had to change the concept. Forget about raffle, because you can't constantly raffle tickets. I mean, then maybe the quality of the base or data will not be so quality. So what we wanted to do, we wanted to set up some goals. We knew we had to the refresh the Dream Escapes 1.0, and we got the new destination, San, San Jose. Then we knew that we need to bring some new ideas, because we need to bring the new traffic. And we knew we have to do something very extraordinary because there's no ruffle. So how we are getting the traffic to this site? What do we have to do for this site to perform? And we have, of course, we had some challenges. Basically, we wanted to attract the user. That was a big challenge for us. We wanted to bring close user closer to the destination without this ruffle. And then we wanted to stay the true to the content we produced. Because based on the results of 2015, we knew that people actually spend a lot of time on our site, meaning the content actually worked. So don't change the content, let's just keep this content and just develop it a bit more. So what was the solution? Basically, we knew at the time we have to do one-of-a-kind experience. We have to enrich travel experience. We have to give ad hoc value to our customers to book their flights. And what that means, it means that they had to expect something unexpected. That they have to be amazed when they get there. So what we did, basically, we did an interactive homepage as a layer. So basically, the people can interact with it. We also um, had some personal touch, so we know the personalization is very important nowadays, so we know that we have to sell this personalization. And then, of course, we added a bit of twist. But I'm not saying a lot because there is a video, so I think the video can say more. And when we start adding this to the concept, we also knew, oh, we have to think about customer, what they need. What, what, what would you need if you're a customer and you're coming to that side? So first of all, do, does everybody know where those destinations are? Mm, maybe, maybe not. So we put a map, a big map, interactive map, a very good map, telling them these are our additional network, these are the destinations we are serving, cheaper, with a different aircraft. And then we knew, you know, customers, they're so spoiled nowadays. So what do you have to do with them? A very quick solution for a getaway, you know, they have to read it fast. I mean, you are probably all amazed when you are on the site and then you're missing this hamburger menu and you say, where is there? Oh, I have to bounce it out, I can't find it. So we actually produce such a content that, you know, it has a big visual, it's a little bit bolded, but another site gives you a, big, uh, a quick solution to go on another destination or just to switch to another content. This was very important for us. And then, you know, people sitting there think, Mauritius, Tampa, that's so far away. Well, actually, from your home, if the airport is your home, to Marish is just seven hours. It's like nothing. So we added this as well. And then we wanted to talk 
We wanted to talk, we wanted to give a storytelling. We don't want to tell you there are 10 tips where you have to dine in Mauritius. This is the best beach you have to visit. No, we want to give this local touch of the destination, something you don't know, something you can't read on Wiki. Something you can only know if you really, really know the destination. And basically, we wanted to custom every single thing according to your IP address. So if we know that you're coming, for example, from Croatia, then we will custom the homepage already and we will already approach you and communicate in a way that we know that you're a Croatian. And this is how it basically looks like. So basically, what we didn't do, we didn't talk about restaurants, but we talked about the best rum in Mauritius and why is the best. And there was a catchy story, you know, Mark Twain almost died because of the good rum. Then we talked about the rainy forest. So the rainy forest of Panama telling you, if you go to Panama, you just have to read it. You take your umbrella and you're flying to Panama. So this is the storytelling we were talking. So as I promised, a quick video. Oh, thanks. And the results, obviously, amazing, as you can see. And before you ask me, yes, we actually, the whole concept be behind was to sell the tickets and we sold the tickets. Unfortunately, I can't put a number because it's very confidential and it depends on the destination, but we sold an enormous amount of tickets to those destinations. That's basically it. So I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to be here. I want to thank you Lufthansa Serbia to follow me here and the Gordian Serbia and Croatia to be here. And thank you for amazing opportunity to speak with you and see you at Zurka. Yeah? <laughs>